April 28, 1996, one of our nation's darkest days. We went to war for a day. You never forget it, and you really never get completely over it, but you, you learn to live with it. At the time, Brian Walpole was a senior doctor inside the rural Hobart Hospital's emergency department. My phone rang to say, you need to come back to hospital. I said, why? They said, we're not sure, but there's been something happen at Port Arthur. The shooting spree started inside the cafe and gift shop, killing 20 people in 90 seconds. Some people thought it was the reenactment of something, so there was confusion. But it was very real. There's somebody going crazy shooting people here. As those who could scrambled to safety, Martin Bryant gunned down another 11 people at the penal colony, including Annette McCacke and her two young daughters, Alana and Madeline, as they tried to run away. As events unfolded, uh, it became apparent that this was a, um, a nation-shattering event. <laughs> at a nearby service station, Bryant killed again then took a hostage with him and returned to the Seascape guest house, triggering an 18-hour standoff with police. If he's done it to make some point in life, he's made that point. Now's the time to come out and uh, avoid any more bloodshed. The siege ended where the house burst into flames. Bryant had earlier murdered its two owners, whom he resented for buying land his father wanted. Thirty-five people were killed in the Port Arthur Massacre. Alongside the 22 injured was the shooter himself, treated in the same hospital. What was that like for everyone there? Quite clearly, he had burns that needed treating. And although a number of staff felt uncomfortable about it, we were professional enough to get on with it, but it had very significant security implications, not only for the ward, but for the whole hospital. As there were a number of people with, um, with ill intent towards Bryant and um, one of them actually managed to get into a back stairwell and was found by a, um, an orderly in a security guard. A psychiatrist who examined Bryant in the days which followed found he took delight and gained excitement from tormenting others. And when asked why he chose this site to unleash such horrors, Bryant responded, a lot of violence has happened there. It must be the most violent place in Australia. It seemed the right place. He was a uh a dark enigma and uh, it, it defies description. Bryant, seen here in a rare image from 2016, remains behind bars in Tasmania's Risdon Prison, where he will die. What do you think of Bryant? Do you, do you think of him at all? Uh, occasionally I think about him and just wonder what the motivation could have been, uh, but it's beyond my comprehension how any human being could carry out such carnage Cruel, heartless carnage, which led to rapid change. And if there was a moment which helped seal the legislative fate of firearms in Australia, it was this, a hug between a doctor and the determined. I was pretty uh, tearful and John Howard caught my eye and I, I caught his. He came over and he put his arm in and he said, don't worry, old son, or words to that effect. And I said, oh, thanks, mate. It was a wonderful moment. Have you seen Mr Howard since? No, I haven't. Well, I just can again say to the doctor, thank you uh, for what you did in the name of humanity. A tragedy which revealed the best and worst of humanity. Andrea Crothers, Sky News in Port Arthur.